So what is your prediction for presidency? Um, Trump out, number one. Um, and you believe this will happen? I hope. I also believe this wouldn't happen back in 2016. Uh, so I hope people are more aware of where the, uh, the trap doors are at this time. Because I think we had way less participation in the last election overall, um, even less in midterms. And I try to vote in all of them. And so I hope this scared the hell out of everybody to the point where, I mean, we we literally have racist people blatantly outright saying they are running things in 2020. Like that should evoke enough it, with that and the pandemic and everybody just kind of just fed up and over everything. Um, so I, my hope is uh, this election will bring an end to that. Um, my hope is that uh, nobody in power gets COVID because if Trump were to die from it, then we get Mike Pence. And I think he's an even bigger threat than Trump was. I think Trump is a puppet and all this. And the real problem is more the um, state and local level officials that are passing passing laws and uh, mandates. Like Governor Kemp, uh, some stuff he did that was just like, how are you even in the, you know, but that's no story. But yeah, I, I hope the right people are in, in positions to do what they need to do. I was really impressed with um, how Kamala handled the debate. Not necessarily the specific issues, but just being articulate. I've never felt more of a need for just someone that can be just basically articulate. Like uh, we've had four years of just somebody that can't even articulate a point without making them sound like an idiot. I thought George W. Bush was like the worst it got. And then this guy, he's... Then, then we have the, the thing that I don't want to happen is backlash. You have Black Lives Matter, you have Antifa, you have Proud Boys, you have all these different factions. It's like a wrestling episode now. All these NWO groups and whatever, um, Four Horsemen, that are all anticipating if this person wins, we're going to lash out and that person, you know. So I hear your fears. I hear your hopes. What do you think is actually going to happen? I think Biden is going to win the election. I think he's going to catch a whole lot of flack. Um, I think someone's going to dig into like their past or try to like discredit his character, same way they did Obama. Um, I think there's going to be a lot of um, backpedaling with you know certain people that were in power and then having to. You even see it with Trump. I think like his, some of his actions as of late um, reflect. Oh, I've had COVID. Now I've had a change of heart on certain things. Like they were going to push back the uh, stimulus check talks. Now they're back in talks with it. Uh, Ice Cube put out a bipartisan plan to both parties, and the Democratic Party decided. They're going to wait till after the election to address it for the, for the black agenda. And the Republican Party decided to go through with it. Before that, I had a real issue with why are we reaching out to people that don't understand our situation for help, like with the black agenda? What is our, the black people agenda for the black agenda? So this is a step to reach across the aisle. Um, I, hope, I hope that works out. I hope there's no violence after the election. I hope this asteroid that we've been hearing about whizzes by and doesn't actually, you know, um... Wow, that asteroid isn't even on my radar, and usually I'm all about what's happening in the skies. Yeah, they talked about that in the summer, and I'm like, oh, so we have Planet of the Apes, Armageddon, what other movie? Outbreak, <laughs> Walking Dead, have we covered everything? <laughs> Murder Hornets, Attack of the Killer Bees, um... It's just like Lovecraft Craft Country. Lovecraft Country, we have is more normal than right. everything going on right now. Let's refer to the mythical approach to Black History lessons every week on HBO. But yeah, it's just uh, it's tense because I've done my part, and that's literally all I can do is vote. I can't grab the guy and sit him down and just tell him about himself because he's not going to listen. Like the group. They, the people that are in power and their supporters are to a point where they just refuse to listen to reason. So I'm, I don't know. Um, 
I hope there's some sort of meet in the middle moment. But that's the Pisces in me trying to be optimistic. How do you feel about Amy Coney Barrett? Do you think she's going to pass? By this point, you would have gotten some sort of, okay, and now I entered the No, there's nothing, no, I don't know that anyone has dug up anything about her. Um, I hate that that's the means of stopping uh, uh, election of an official from happening is, let's dig into their dirt first, but that hasn't happened. And I don't, I don't know, I don't know that uh, that's going to stop that situation from taking place. I, I just don't believe we have the votes to keep her out. It's just such a shame because we should be focusing on the election. That is the most important thing and we should be waiting. And they stopped Obama at every turn yeah. for his judges. But uh, I feel like the Supreme Court nomination is misdirection to keep up. Uh, just there's been so much misdirection happening to take focus off of what needs to happen that I can see why people are like, damn if I do, damn if I don't. I can see why people, so there's some people that are like, I'm not voting because I don't see the point. I definitely see the point, but I can see the frustration and I wish there was more proactive and not reactive responses to everything, um, especially with the riots and the protests that happened. That, that was definitely, bad happens, we react. We are not collectively as good at strategizing and moving ahead of situations. Like I spoke to a, a friend of mine that's um, Nigerian and she had a really interesting take on it. She was like, instead of maybe going out in the streets and protesting, let's look at who's in power. We need about five or six lawyers that we need to back to put in those same judicial seats. We need about five or six people. We need to, we got one of every person that is in power. We need to back our, our officials and make sure they're in the same position to do. So it made a lot of sense when I look back at um, people that like, that, like yourself, not from here and they've been taught more come here to be a doctor, come here to be a lawyer, come here to be something of power. So when something like this happens, they're still good. They're not as affected as those of us that are, you know, not in positions to do anything about the bad that's happening to us. So they have a different mindset on how to handle it as opposed to us. How do you think the world views the United States right now? We're viewed to the world the way Atlanta views the Falcons. The Atlanta Falcons, year after year, are the most disappointing sports entity of all time. Either they have really embarrassing moments, do really well, and then blunder, or like this season they're 0-5, and their coach just got fired, GM is fired. Owner should be fired, but they're not going to do it. So I think the world views us like the United States is the Atlanta Falcons of the planet, where we just can't get it right. You know, we're, soon as lockdown was lifted, all the clubs were full. Um, every place where you shouldn't be gathering, we're gathering. But I think Americans in general, we're rebels. Like, we don't ever really follow rules. When we see a yellow light, we don't slow down, we speed up. We do what we think is best for us, but not what's best for the person next to us. So we collectively, not just white, black, white, every race, we have to be more cognizant of each other's uh, well-being and get out of that me, me, me. I think our social media attachments make us so self-involved and self-absorbed that we forget to look out for one another in a real way. So you translate that on a mass scale to the rest of the planet, we look like a bunch of just, like, what is our ex major export? Entertainment. And so what Jay-Z and Beyonce is our biggest export. Like, not a resource, not something that the world needs. Um, went to Cuba last year and just seeing how much they love Americans, but they have so little. Like you have to bring a, to our host for our Airbnb, we have to bring like some sort of basic toiletry item, just as a, a, a good gesture. And so I brought a giant bottle of Listerine and the guy was so thankful. It was just a big old bottle. Something that's in surplus at Walmart. They're thankful for just the little things. So when you look at how we are in our, just excess, and then you put us in a pandemic situation and how we're still just got our chest out, we're gonna be fine, you know, we're still showing new seasons of Mass Singer. Why is that even being shot? You know, so it's like, we, it just looks to the world like we're not taking it seriously. They're, they're doing like curfews and everybody being in the house by certain points has kind of cut down the numbers and we're, there's a carnival that just went up in Cumberland Mall parking lot that um, I stopped and filmed it. I was like, I have to show this. This is like, this is America. 
we're on Ferris wheels, and the rest of the world is like cowering in their homes trying to make sure they're not dying the next day. So it's kind of, you know.